With new day comes new strength and new thought. You can follow me on Twitter, Koss1001. My name is Stephen Koss, and I wrote a book recently called On Standby, South of Heaven, Coping with Cancer, My Struggle, My Journey, My Growth. And this is a book about taking care of my father at brain cancer. I had left everything. Um, I didn't know him very well, and we didn't get along. But I had left my whole life in Florida to come back up to Cleveland to, to handle this situation that I, that I thought I could handle easily, but I was quite quite wrong. Uh, I went through a lot of struggles, uh, breakups, bankruptcy, depression, and drug use. Uh, but I overcame it all, and I came out on the other side a different person. And I'm working with the real estate investor, Michael Otto out of Cleveland, Ohio. He's asked me to come on and help him with this Taking Action Today seminar and, and handle some of the motivational lessons, uh, life lessons, that I learned and to share them with you guys. So he wanted me to make some quick videos uh, to put out there so I can introduce myself. And so this is the first one, and I, I just wanted to touch base on motivation today. You know, what what is motivation, and how do we create and sustain motivation? Seems like an easy question. But I mean, personally, I think we get motivation from energy. You say energy. Well, how do we get energy? We get energy through being excited about life. Excitement, energy, motivation. I know when I've been to a lot of these seminars, you get, you get super jacked up in there. You're like, oh yeah, I don't know how to do this real estate seminar, boy. I can't wait to sign up. I'm going out there. I'm going to move a billion properties. I'm going to do this and that. But then as time goes on, we lose that motivation. So the second question is, is how do we maintain that motivation? And, it, and the answer is super simple, and you're probably going to laugh at it, but it's, it's as simple as just get a notebook and writing it down. <laughs> right? Oh, really? Writing it down. It's that easy, huh? I'm sure you've heard the phrase, seeing is believing. When goals are tangible, and you can, you can touch them physically and see them with your eyes, they can become more real in this physical reality of ours. So... <clears throat> How do we start out with this? And can you, can you explain this a little better, Stephen, right? I'd just like to ask that you um, define your dream, your, visualize your goal. So it's, it's crystal clear. There's, there's no miscommunication between yourself and your inner self. You know exactly where you want to go. And you may think that sounds very easy. Oh, I know what I want to do, Stephen. I want to be a real estate investor who primarily buys apartment buildings to hold for long term. I want to hold them for 20 to 30 years and then I want to sell them and then I want to sell those apartment buildings and I want to retire. In the meantime, I want to have cash flow um, so I can live my day to day life and, and work on writing my next book. Awesome. Great goal. Great dream, right? If it's not written down, unfortunately, it might get lost. It might not become as defined later. It's, it's not reinforced on a daily basis. We're having so many thoughts a day. Forty to 50,000 thoughts, that's a lot to compete with. Uh, if you're not crystal clear and writing things down, they don't seem to happen. They don't seem to manifest as quickly as maybe you would like them. So I just want to relate this real quick, a simple notebook. This is actually an old workout notebook that me and Michael did when we were really, really young. I mean, this is from December 2001. I mean, you can see on here, there's certain workouts on here that we did, and we, and we wrote down how much we lifted and how many repetitions we did. And I use this example because it's something most people can relate to. Is uh, I used to work in health clubs and promote gyms all over the country. And these are brand new people that had no idea about working out. They, it was a new job for them. They didn't know what their job was. They didn't, order, they didn't know anybody. And so I was like, just write everything down. You get more accustomed to it. And you'll see your progress, right? Seeing is believing again. Well, look, Steve, I, I came in three days a week. I said I was going to come in. Oh, look, and the cardio, it's getting, it's getting easy for me. I wrote down, I, I felt stronger at the end of this workout. Oh, and look, and look here, I, I ate correctly today. I, I had my protein shake, I had my turkey sandwich, I had chicken for dinner. Okay, this is about the maintaining of that motivation, right? You, know, you can see, you're like, holy crap, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm, I'm getting such so right there in black and white. No gray area, people. It's right there for you. And it's as easy as writing it down. Again, this information is not secret. It's not brand new. There was a rule that I came across very young. When I went to my first seminar, I started doing that. I know I'm very young and 
And the gentleman that was putting on the seminar is like, you're, you're all going to understand this information 100%. Problem is, 5% of you are going to utilize it. And the rest are just going to go back to your daily lives. You know, and that's the problem is if you're not writing things down and holding yourself accountable and you're not seeing as believing, you get caught up in your old routine. Yeah. So, I, and I realize you're like, oh, it sounds so easy and I can do it and I, I can do it. It's no problem. I can be motivated. I am motivated. But sometimes you have a bad day. Life's tough. I mean, my sister's a single mom. I know how hard her days can be. You know, some days you may forget your lunch. <laughs> You may get in a fight on the road, have some road rage. You may then have to go pick the kids up from soccer practice. Plus, you got to feed them as they're screaming for McDonald's in your ear. You know, life is difficult. You're not going to have a super easy day every day. So, two things that help me when I'm not feeling up to it. I know Michael lives up north in Cleveland. I live in Clearwater, so I know it's tougher for him probably to get out of bed in the morning than sometimes it is for me because the sun's shining in my face in 70 degrees. But one thing, if you're in a tough mood, if you're in a bad spot, if you had one of those days and, and now you're directing your thoughts towards why you're angry or why it happened and you can't get off of it, play your favorite song. Crank it and sing it as loud as you can. I guarantee you, you're not going to be in that bad mood much longer or you won't be able to maintain it. You can't contain two moods simultaneously in your body. It's just not possible. So music... Great motivator. I use. I like to train, so lifting for me is rather easy. You know, I can go in there and I don't put my headphones on because, you know, lug around your phone. Just I, I hate doing that in the gym. So I work out for 20, 30 minutes. It normally takes me to lift, and then I go run and I save my music for running because I don't enjoy running so much. But when those certain songs come on, I feel something different inside. I feel a little rush energy. I can get goosebumps sometimes, and I'll just start running faster because I feel that beat. I feel that. That harmony, and it gets me going. So music can be a great motivator if you're feeling down, and you need to get some excitement and get some energy. Secondly, a partner. You know, we hope that you come to our Taking Action Today seminar and you bring your significant other, or you bring a family member, or you bring your best friend. You know, somebody that can hold you accountable. Because as uh, I'm getting to more of these videos, you know, life lesson number one in my book is called Word is Born. Which basically means, if you say you're going to do something, you do it. Uh, if you do do these things and you follow through, your frequency and your reach are going to broaden. You're going to be known as the person who can be counted on. People will call you when they need something, they need help, and then you'll be able to return those favors and vice versa, back and forth. And you do that by having a partner, write them down, you say, oh, yep. Steven, yeah, I'm going to meet you at the gym at 5 o'clock. We're going to work out, and then we're going to look at those properties at 7, right? You got those three properties pulled up? Absolutely. Because I said I was going to do it. I wrote it down, and I'm going to do it. Now, another quick tip that you can do is put in this little notebook in your front pocket. You're probably saying, Steven, why would I put this in my front pocket? It's a little bulky. Isn't that going to be uncomfortable? Yeah, it's going to be a little uncomfortable. You're going to feel it. Well, why is that so important? Well, today people have these little Fitbits they wear on their wrists, tells how many calories they're burning, how many steps they're taking. They're taking quite a few steps in a day. Wouldn't you agree? Imagine every time you put this in your left pocket and you take a step with your left leg, that it sends a signal to your brain that you can feel it. I feel that's tight. Well, what is that? Well, that's my dreams. Those are my goals. That's the path and how I get there. That's my motivation. So you're subconsciously programming yourself every time you take a step with this notebook in your front pocket because it's a little bulky, because it sends a signal to your brain. Really good way to direct your thoughts and have that on your mind. Okay. So we touched base a little bit on the motivation and putting together your goals, holding yourself accountable. Seeing is believing, and the simple facts of the 95-5 rule. This is very easy. So here, I just want to prove this to you. Is I've been to a couple of seminars lately, and I've heard this study before. 3% of Harvard graduates make 
more as much as the 97 other percent combined. Crazy, right? Uh, this can't be correct, right? These people are Harvard graduates, best and brightest in the country. So they wanted to interview. Why is this happening? Like they want to find this out. Like, what is going on with these three percenters? <clears throat> the difference between the three percenters and the 97 percent? They wrote their goals down. That's all they did. It's that simple. Writing a goal down. Problem is, the other 95%, or in this case, 97%, 97%, it's not going to do it. You know, I, I hope to, hoping to improve those numbers, and I, and I hope you're one of those three to five percenters. And I hope we see you at the Taking Action Today seminar. You can find Michael Alder at michaelalder.com. If you would like the whiteboard program, Becoming Twice as Effective, for me, you can email me at scos1001 at gmail. This is Stephen Koss, just saying smile big, shine bright. Thank you. <laughs>